approach we're taking, if you looked in the chat, we're going to have um, everyone put on mute just because we've had a lot of feedback on the call, which has been distracting and certainly got me distracted, as you know. So um, uh, I appreciate your patience on that. On the off chance, um, Carrie has to hit the button again. I'm going to keep an eye to make sure I don't get muted. But if I do, by chance, you can't hear me, just let me know. It'll be a work in progress. Anyway, good morning. It's definitely feeling folly out there. Um, very Halloween-y out there. Uh, so I hope you're doing well wherever you are in Atlantic Canada. In terms of this topic, you know I love this topic. It's a great topic. It's something that I actually probably facilitate sessions on, team sessions on the most, uh, because it impacts people in so many different ways. How we communicate, how we work with others, how we adapt our style to connect with others is pretty well the basics of being in business. So this topic is something sort of near and dear to me, and it's something I see impacting everyone, including myself, every day. So in terms of what we talked about last time, we talked a little bit about what we connect with, the people that we connect with, and we sort of looked through the DISC styles. I'll do a quick little debrief um, on that today, just for kind of get everyone back to, to understanding what that is. It's very easy uh, in a couple of weeks to forget what that is. Over time, though, if you do use the tool, it's incredible how quickly it comes to you and you almost don't think about it. We looked at your own style as well. And one of the things we'll do today at the end of the session is we're gonna, I'm gonna make you start thinking about one thing at least you're gonna do differently with one of your colleagues. It could be your boss, it could be um, a client of yours. So start thinking about that as we start going through the session today. We're gonna look a little bit more. We started on the pros and cons of each style. So what's, what works really well, what can be a little challenging. And we'll sort of finish up that today along with um, some things to think about depending on what your style is, what you should do more or less of. Big thing though, of anything, it's not about us, it's around how we adapt to others. So once we have a sense of what we are, how we adapt to each of the styles, we'll have some tips and tricks. It's hard to do at all in the webinar, of course, this is a big topic and all these, um, there's lots of small bits and all these different styles, but I think we'll do a nice um, sort of brush over of what it is and sort of start to get you thinking about it. And by all means, you can certainly check online as well. A lot of this information you can pull up online and get yourself familiarized even further with the disc uh, profile the disc styles, um, and uh, hopefully start doing it today. A little bit of a difference. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about the styles again. So we talked about D, I, S, and C last time. Um, so the dominance, challenges and problems, um, tends to be very direct in their approach. You know what their opinions are. Um, they are forthright, you know what they're looking for. They're very goal oriented, very strategic. They're really gonna be looking for what, what impacts the organization and what impacts their goals. And as we'll talk about a little later, how you help them is help them meet their goals. Influencers, people oriented, sort of brainstormers, they think about, they're wonderful at coming up with possibilities and ideas, highly connected people. They connect with people super well, really fast. They're very intuitive. Uh, people. So they're also much quicker. So the D's and the I's tend to be faster in their approach. Then we get a little bit on the more slower side, more methodical side is the S's and the C's. So the S's are your team player. They're the people that are going to think things through. They're going to have absolutely a lens on the people around them, how it affects the people around them. Uh, they don't love change dramatically, but uh, if you work them through it, they can be your best advocate for change. With regards to the C, the C is the person that makes the build, sure the building doesn't fall down. They make sure the I's are dotted and T's are crossed on the policy. They make sure that every detail is just right and they make sure that the execution is flawless. So those are just some basic pieces in the different styles. So if we look at the words we talked about last time, so just to refresh your memory, we won't go through them all, but these are some of the words that connect to the different styles. So the D's are risk takers, they're decisive, the I's are influential, friendly, they connect really well with others. The calm and steady and loyal, which is really key, I think, approach, the S's. And the C's are the methodical fact finders, researchers. So that kind of hopefully brings you back to where you were before in terms of your understanding. In terms of the different pieces we have to look at, we have to look at the open and the guarded, which we talked about before. So just in a little refresh, guarded, so open, let's start with open. So the open style is someone who is um, pretty open about their emotions, often very um, friendly, a real trusting approach. 
these are people that people connect with very easily. People are a little bit more guarded, a little bit of stand back. You don't always know their private life. You might not know all their private concerns or challenges. So be just a little bit more guarded in their approach. And then you get the direct and indirect. And we're gonna get back to this now in a few minutes when we start talking about figuring other people out. So direct approach. A direct person is someone who they lay it on the table, you know what their opinion is, you know what they're looking for. You really have a better understanding. After a meeting, a direct person, you, you know what it's all about. An indirect person, you might be wondering, hmm, I wonder what so-and-so thinks. That's someone who's probably more indirect. They're less likely to speak up. They're someone who's gonna think, think it through, make a comment if they think it makes sense. Okay, so those, that's more the indirect approach. So just a little refresh there on what we went through last time. So if you look at the different styles, you've got all these different components playing together. So if you look at the other ways that we look at things, we look at task and people. So put them all up there at the same time. So the Ds and the Cs are task oriented. So they're more guarded in their approach. They're more direct. They know you know what they're looking for. They're going to be and they're no, you know, it's not surprising that their goals are very task oriented. So how do we get this accomplished? How are we going to get this done on time? When are we going to get this done? So the so that's the D's and the C's that they tend to be more that way. But the D's tend to be a bit faster than the C's, but they definitely focus on the same task area. One is more, um, they're both more guarded, but one's more direct and one's less direct. Okay, so that's kind of how it plays out there. The I's and the S's are down on the people side. They're going to connect with people. They're going to notice people. They're going to be concerned about people and how that plays into getting the task done. Not that they're not concerned about task. The faster um, the I's versus the S's. So just like the D's, the faster and the slower plays into it. The D's and I's are going to be like, let's get it done. Let's just do it now. Uh, in a meeting, they can probably make decisions super fast. The C's and the S's just need to take it a bit slower, think it through. You need to give them time to process information. Okay, so that's a lot of information. We'll, we'll get into a little bit more as we, as we walk along today. So let's talk a little bit more in each area. We talked, I'll just run through the D's and the I's, which we did last time, but we'll just run through these um, again. So the D's in terms of challenges, um, they, sorry, strengths, they are get or done people. They love taking risks. Now risks, calculated risks. Okay, so in your world, obviously, there's, there's things in, in a sort of a re, more, more regulated space, right? So, but they'd be more likely to try something new. They love to take charge of the natural person to step up and take charge of something. Um, they love seeing the tasks are being accomplished. Challenges for them, they can be very bored. They don't like to be put into a box. So decisions really need to, um, they need to make decisions. You take the decision making away from them, they get a little bit upset about that. It's not their happy place. You telling them what to do is not what they want. They want to be involved in the decision making. Because the problem solving is what they love to do. Um, they don't love being diplomatic as such. They kind of just like to rip the band-aid and say how it is. Now I'm using a little more extreme example of a D. Uh, but yeah, they'll just put it out there on the table. And that's as much as that's being diplomatic is hard, sometimes it's, it's what you need to be. Sometimes we need to rip the band-aid and sometimes, especially with clients, we need to be, be a bit more, more diplomatic. They're not often also talking about their, their personal concerns, their vulnerabilities, or even their private life. So that's kind of tough for them as well. So for them to pause and take their time is another thing that's really tough for them. So in terms of eyes, we talked about this last time, the last thing we did talk about last time, just our last refresh. Um, they're, again, creative possibilities, ideas. They're amazing at persuading and selling people, and they inspire others so they can get everyone rallied around something. And that's, don't underestimate the value of that. Uh, again, they can get bored because they're fast like the Ds. Um, they don't like being restricted. They like the idea of just creating something and having all the ideas considered. They don't like to be sort of, here's your little box of what you need to work within, okay? They definitely do not like detail and they can get very distracted and disorganized is one of their downfalls versus the Ds, which can be actually be quite assertive on the negative side. What about the Ss? So the S's love harmony. It's really around that steady piece, not just in their approach, and they like to walk through things in a steady pace, but it's working with others. They like to have that harmony. They don't love conflict. They're amazing listeners. They can be your best um, colleague, your best mentor, your best confidant. Uh, they do like having um, 
people around them to, to get into an S's inner circle is is a gift. They have some people super close to them, and and but they have lots of other people that they can get along with pretty much everyone. And they don't like conflict. Okay, so they don't like when when um, like when I think about certain environments that are extremely competitive in the workplace. It could be sales. It could be um, even ranking. Sometimes it's very rare these days, but ranking you know one person against another in a work environment. It's very uncomfortable for them. They don't find it comfortable um, saying no, which, which I'll bring up a little later as well. So lastly, the C's, okay, they keep the walls up and everything else. So what else do they do? Uh, love them personally because, because I'm not one. They are highly organized. Uh, they plan before they speak or act. So they think about something, they think it through. Um, they plan sometimes to the nth degree, which can be the downside of that, but they're extremely organized. And even if they have a lot of things on their desk, they know where everything is, unlike myself. Uh, they don't like um, unpredictable environments. They like to have a sense of if, you're, if you've got a C coming to your meeting, make sure they know the agenda, make sure they know what the expectations are. Are we making decisions today? Are we going to just talk something through? Is it open? Are you, are you gonna be asking people their opinion? Because the C's, you know, will only speak up if they really need to. Same with the S's. So again, give them a sense of what that predictable environment could look like. If you've got a client that's a C, send them things in advance. Talk to them in advance. Don't don't just show up at their office, right? Let them know you're coming. Let them know what you're going to be talking about, right? Even if it's just for a social call. Hey, I thought I, you know, I'm in your area on Thursday. I thought I'd pop by and say hello and see what you're up to. Absolutely, but they like to have planned things happening. They like to have a sense of direction. If they're confused, like if it's a colleague or a client and they're really confused on their policy, as an example, you need to explain it slowly and methodically to a C, right? They need to have sense of understanding. So if I have a claim, what do I exactly need to do? It's not like just give me a call. No, no, I want to know exactly what's going to be happening. Walk me through the process. Make sure I understand it. I want to see how it all fits together. That's, that's why they're so good at what they do. Now, how does this play into, I want to use the rest of the session, the last half an hour or so, to really talk about adapting. So why? Why do we need to adapt? Why can't we just be ourselves? Why can't I just be an I? Why can't you just be a D? Because how, how it plays into the workplace and how it plays into teams, but also play, how it plays into trust. So that could be with anybody in your world at work or at home. So if there's little or no trust, there's no foundation for permanent success. And so how do you build trust? So now we talked about this a little bit before. So I want you to think about, you know, people that you don't trust, right? Put it in your head. Who's somebody I don't trust? What is that? Um, and we won't get into a big dialogue on that for time because I know we did talk about it before in another session. Uh, but I just want to throw out a little way to think about it. And this is exactly how it applies to DISC as well. So if you're trustworthy, you're going to be credible. Okay. There's going to be a sense of intimacy, liabilities, not so much for DISC, but still. So credibility, how do you build credibility, right? Getting to know somebody, you're having an interaction with somebody right? Intimacy means connecting with them. And self-orientation is something that takes away from trust. You know, am I just out for me? So here's how it plays into DISC, in my mind. So with DISC, if I'm connecting with you, I'm giving you what you need, asking you the right questions. I'm giving you time to process if needed, or I'm picking up the pace as needed. Whatever I'm doing, I'm giving you the world that you actually work best in. That's how I adapt to make our relationship work. I'm going to be building that sense of connection. I'm going to be building that sense of trust. Okay, so if I'm someone, for example, if, if I, you're a D and I'm working with a D, I'm going to get straight to business. And that will be appreciated by a D. If I'm talking to an S, an S is, you know, people oriented. I'm going to take a minute to ask them how their weekend was. And we'll segue into work right? That creates that sense of trust. And then that credibility builds over time. And there's a sense of intimacy is the word they use here, but that sense of connection, okay? What takes away from that is if you're just doing it for a reason. You have to do this because you really want to do it for the person. You want to create that relationship. This is for the long-term piece. You can make short-term relationships as well, but these ones will be everlasting if you, do, if you work them properly. So if we look at it that's fine and dandy. So if I don't know what my client is, how do I figure out what my client is? How do I figure out why my colleague and I don't connect? 
really well. So what we're going to talk about now is direct and indirect and how we pick, you know, we look at other people. So pick somebody, see if someone can put in the chat here. Um, can you put in the chat somebody famous? Let's pick somebody famous and see if we can figure out what they are. Anyone think of someone famous? Just no political, don't do Trump. <laughs> pick someone famous maybe and somebody everybody would know on the call. Anybody think of anyone? Britney Spears. I don't know if I know Britney Spears that well. We could try Brad Pitt. Let's try. Let's try Britney Spears for fun. I don't know. I don't know where that. Like I've never really heard her interviewed or anything. But let's throw it out there and see. All right. Let's take Britney Spears. I've never done Britney Spears before. Okay. So how do you have to look at it? You have to look at two different. First of all, we start out with two different elements. Okay. Direct in approach. So you guys tell me. Some of you may know her better than. I do. I would probably guess where she might fall, but let's just see where we are. So if we think, first of all, you start off, is the person director in, is this a person, if we ran into Brittany and we started chatting, is she someone who's going to tell me exactly what she's thinking? Is she somebody who's going to put it all out there? Or is this someone who's going to sit back and wait? What do you think? Is she going to be out there with her opinions? Probably come up and shake your hand, or is she kind of going to be a little stand back and a little uh, quiet and thoughtful? What do you think? Let's see. Ooh, let's do Oprah afterward. Okay, so you think she's someone who might wait and stand back. Okay, so if that's the case, then she would be indirect. Okay, so that helps. So let me just see if I've got my next slide up here. So we've got direct and indirect. If we think that she's indirect, then immediately we know that she might be a C or an S, okay? Whether it's true or not, I don't think it really matters, because we probably won't meet Brittany, but just for fun. Uh, and this is where it's interesting, you can have dialogue, if you're working around a client, as an example, you can actually have discussions around, yeah, I know, oh, I know so-and-so personally, but I think he's different at work. Well, how is, he, how is he at work? Oh, well, he's really quiet, or she's really quiet. So Brittany, yeah, she's probably stand up, she's not gonna put herself out. She's not gonna stand out and start speaking out about things. So, you know, she's possibly your CRS. Then we have the next question. So then it takes the right side off the table. We're all only looking at the left here. So then you've got guarded or open. Is she someone that's going to talk, be really friendly and outgoing, you know, outgoing in the sense of people? Is she going to talk to you about, um, like, would you make a connection with her pretty quickly, you think? Um, is she going to talk about maybe some concerns she has or if she was really worried about something? Is that someone she would be? Or would she be someone who would be a little bit more private in their approach? What do you think? Is she more open or guarded? Take a guess. Guarded. Okay, so someone says guarded. So if we think someone is guarded and indirect, what would that mean? Where would they fall? Theoretically, what would we think they would be? What letter? C, yeah. So if we think someone's a C, that's half the battle. <laughs> then we get it, that's only a guess, okay? Everyone you do is a guess. Now sometimes if you're talking as a team and you're talking about a client as an example, everyone's aligned like, oh, they're so this, right? Walk through this. The other way is to test it out as well. So if I go, I think I made the slide next. Okay, so if we, then we say, okay, we think she's a C. And then you actually can validate it by saying, well, is she faster in her approach? Is she slower in her approach? So again, I don't know if anybody would know this. Is she super fast decision maker? Is she someone that really goes at a quick, quick pace? If anybody knows, please put it in the chat. So let's just make an assumption that maybe she's a bit slower. So then you're back to the CS. Or maybe you're thinking she's a bit faster. Hmm. So everyone's more, we all have all of these. Okay. So if you're doing this around a client, you may be stuck on, well, may, we think D or C, just as an example. Maybe they're both. When I do these assessments with people, most people come out with more than one and sometimes more than one predominant. So again, that gets a little more confusing, but you actually just think through what you do know. Okay. So let's just say we think she's slower. And is she people oriented or is she task? Is she a doer? Like, let's get that album out, right? So if anyone knows, please put it in the chat. We could say, well, actually, you know, she's pretty people oriented. She's pretty caring. Um, she's been with the same label. Oh, there you go. Someone said people. Oh, someone said task. There we go. So who knows? Uh, so or maybe there's confusion. And maybe as a team that comes up, I think she's more taskful. I think she's more people. Maybe she's both. 
So maybe she's a CS. Okay, so then you come up with that and you think, well, what do we know about a CS? Right? So if we, and well, I'll go through now each of them as well. But if you think about a CS, what do we, do we know? We know the CS, one thing, if you look at the here, what's in common? They're both slower. Right? So if she is a CS, as an example, then you would take it slower. You wouldn't want to blindside her with things. You'd want to walk her through things. You'd want to take time. If someone, um, if her agent, I'm not good with all this stuff, but if her agent said, we, you know, you really need, I think you really need to switch labels. Like, I don't think you're getting what you need from this, uh, from this company. Then that would be a thing that as a CS might take six months. Right. So if things take are slow to change, it doesn't. But when they're committed to it, they get it done. They do the research. A CS is going to take their time, think it through, make sure all the people around them are OK with it. Maybe family members. I'm going to be making a big shift in my career or I'm going to be putting out a new album or whatever it is. It's got to be slow and methodical. OK, so those are just things that you'd know right away. So sure enough, you go have a meeting, you give her advance notice, you tell her exactly what you're looking for, and you tell, give her as much information as you can. If she was a DI to the other extreme, you'd be fast and furious, get her done, and give her the executive summary only and let her make the decision. OK, this is how things can change dramatically and how you look at them. So we'll talk about this a little bit more as well. Again, you can see how you could spend a whole half day just trying to, you know, figure out your own team, you know, learning about each other and actually figuring this stuff out. And you can actually have fun with it, right, as, a, as an organization it's around your clients, as an example. Okay, let's see. So, again, I've just got some things that you would consider in each one, but I'm going to go into everything specifically, actually. So, with the Ds, in relationship with Ds, um, you want to make sure you support their goals. Okay, so think about that client, think about that person you probably started to think about already, that kind of drives you a bit crazy, chances are they're also opposite to you in the style, uh, then with a relationship with a D, if they're a D, let's just presume that's the case. So how do you get along with them? Don't judge them. How do you get along with them? How do you actually make it easier for them? So support their goals. Business-like. They don't want, and don't take offense to this. D's and C's really don't want to hear about your private life. Now, if they're if you're in their inner circle, there's probably some commentary, but they really because they of course they want to have conversations around outside of work topics, but only for the select few. Okay, it's not something they want to do on a frequent basis throughout the day. So don't make that assumption. Go straight to business and see how they react. Right, test it out. If we think that Brittany's a C uh, or CS could be confusing, because you're like, ooh, which one do I do? Right? Am I going in, try one direction and see if it works? And for example, if you start talking about something around their kids or their dog or something, it's very quickly you can tell if they're really engaged in that conversation. No harm, no foul. Wow, she's definitely more C than S. <laughs> okay, but in this situation, Ds. So in terms of recognizing, they don't want to be necessarily, um, Ds don't want necessarily want to be always praised or anything, but recognize when something's significant, right? You know, hey, that, you know, I really appreciated that you did this work. Or, hey, I saw that you, you won that award. You know, as a company, you won that award. They want to hear that. They want to hear that they're acknowledged for accomplishments, okay? Well organized. You darn well better go into a D. Be very precise, very short and sweet. Executive summary only. And have the backups there if they want the detail, but do not give it to them unless they ask for it. And one thing I will say, as I've said before, is always make sure they make the final decision. You never want to push something on a D. You give them options with your rec expert recommendation. So if it's a client, here's my recommendation. Um, you know, went to market, here's the market I would recommend and why. Here's a very brief summary of where I see the differences are with the other markets. What do you think? They want to make that call, okay? Whereas other people are happy to say, oh my God, just tell me which one to go with, okay? Not a D. In terms of eyes, okay, it's exciting and fun. Yes, they do like to have a bit of fun, okay? So if you're that person, then yeah, you got to have a bit of fun at work. And I think at the end of the day, everyone likes a bit of fun at work too. A little laugh here, a little joke there. Um, under ideas and dreams, but just really understand what they want to accomplish because they're all about possibilities, right? One thing they're not good at is being ridiculously organized. 
no harm, no foul, right? They have to work at it. So help them do that. So if you have a meeting with an I who's someone, maybe it's a marketing person, maybe it's a someone, you know, who is in that space. They're very connected to people. It could be a salesperson. If you have a meeting with them, summarize it. So send, and just say, look, hey, would it be helpful if I can send you an email um, sort of with the to-do so I can keep track of it? I can almost guarantee if someone's a core I, they will be thrilled to get that email. I know I would. They don't like to argue. They like to work with, uh, so it's like an and versus a but. They're all about ands, like, oh, that's okay. If we have a problem, let's find a creative solution. Okay, so they're not going to want to be arguing about something. <clears throat> and they really, here's another really big one from a client perspective. They really like testimonials. So if you've got a client and you've got a referral, so one of your clients says, um, you would ask your client, look, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do more work. Um, in this space or this geography or whatever it is, you know, is there anybody you'd recommend I chat with? You know, ask them, can I use your name, right? Because if you're going into an I and Joe Brown over there, um, I really, you know, if I'm an I and I think the world of Joe Brown, then that's golden, okay, it's for an I. Not for a C or an S necessarily, but for an I, it's definitely somewhat something that's golden, right? They don't have to have all the nitty gritty detail. They will trust if I trust you and you tell me to hire somebody you tell me to work with somebody you tell me um, the broker I should be working with that really goes a long way okay so those words those how your name is being put out there with others goes a long way with s's you really have to listen to s's going on and on being the person that talks all the time is not appropriate actively listen show in personal interest in them ask them for something and it's got to be something genuine okay because they're they're, they're going to notice if you're not genuine. Something that means something to them. Ask them about it, right? Um, patient, slow, don't be too structured, kind of go where they need to go. And to get into that inner circle, like an S, the worst thing about an S as a client is that an S is not going to tell you when they're upset. So to get to know or when they're not comfortable with something, right? They just won't renew. <laughs> Okay, they're going to be the person, you know, which you often see a lot of, I'm sure, and uh, people who just kind of just don't renew and you just don't know why or they never called you back. Okay, so you need to be consistently in touch with them, but not overwhelming. Be patient, be slow, take your time, doing a renewal, give them lots of time in advance. Make sure it's not behind. Give them, if it's two months before, three months, whatever it is, whether it's commercial or personal lines, give them the time. Meet with them. So what are you thinking about now for the renewal in the fall? Or what are you thinking about this? Right, what are some things I was thinking to go to market in this way? You know, what are your thoughts? Talk it through, give them time to make decisions, okay? Uh, lastly, with C's, um, it's about being organized. If you ask a C a question, kind of similar to an S as well, but very much with a C, they need to think it through in a step-by-step -step fashion. Okay, give them time, wait through the sounds, ask them a question. Their brains, I love because they get through all the little nitty gritty detail and they understand how something works. You're talking about something very specific. They're gonna want to know the details. Okay, so ask them a question. So what would be something that would stop you from this? Don't ask them about how you feel about something. Ask them what they think about something. What do you think about that? You know, how much would that affect your business? Or if it's a, if it's a, if it's a colleague of, those, of yours and you're trying to move something forward, you know, so what would stop you here? What do you need now to make that decision? What would be helpful for you, right? Ask them one question and then wait. Or ask them a question and let them get back to you. Okay, one thing with be very slow and methodical with your process. That's where they live. That's a space and that's why they're good at what they do. Love pros and cons. Okay, so here's the part. If you're talking about from a client perspective and you've got to see, okay, so this is this, this market. Okay, this is where we went. Here's the pros of this company. Here's the pros of this company, right? So here's where, why I would suggest this one. Here are the pros, here are the cons. What do you think? Okay, don't expect an answer right away. Let them think it through and ask them if they have any further questions and ask them, tell them, give them a week or two to ask you questions. They love being risk averse. So they, of course, you live in the world of risk mitigation, so that's perfect. But they need to know something can't backfire. So explaining to them, for example, a coverage that will cover them for it this possibility within their industry, they will very much appreciate. Whether they take up you up on it or not, anything that can mitigate risk, period, whether it's from a 
um, like whether it's their vehicles or their, their or even their people from a liability perspective. Understanding that is really significant. When things change in their industry, if you're on top of that and you can give them some reassurances, whether their current policy is something additional, they're gonna be all over that. All right, let me see now, Tom, I tell you I could do this all day. Uh, okay, so if you're a D, so here's just some things to think about for you guys, okay, from a self-awareness perspective. So what do you actually need to do differently? Okay, this will help you whether you know what someone else is or not just in your day, okay? If you find that you're a D, then something that you need to do often, I'd say significantly, of the Ds I've worked with, active listening. They're so fast, Ds, and they're so furious, and they're so dedicated to actually executing on projects or completing something. I mean, it's brilliant in terms of getting things done, but often means that they're not really listening and they lose attention really quickly. Okay, which is why you got to get it in there and get the main points in quickly with a D. They often can seem kind of, kind of intense about getting something done and very impatient. So sometimes trying to loosen up a bit, trying to you know, adapt in their own way to have a more relaxed image, especially if you're a leader, is really significant. One of the biggest things I see with these, uh, when I work with these individually and they come in and we do um, assessments or even reviews on them, is around empathy right? Patience for sure, sensitivity and everything, but empathy. They care, it's just they don't show it. And because they're so fast and so furious and so dedicated, sometimes they forget to think about the people side. So if you're a D and you have someone around you who is very people-oriented, brilliant. Get them to pull on you when you're going a little too quickly and you're not, in, in, you know, including people maybe in a decision or whatever it might be, okay? This is another of so understanding why you make conclusions. If you're a D, they D's will move through very quickly to make a decision. So they they will think super fast, strategically put the pieces together and make a decision. As a leader, if you're a leader or even within your team, explaining why is really significant. Not and walking through it slowly, which can be painful for a D, but really saying, okay, so here's why I did this. Well, this happened, and because of that, and because the market's a hard market right now, and this is going to be happening in six months' time, this is why I made this conclusion, okay? Not everyone will follow them, so they need to take a minute, slow down in terms of their thought process, and speak about it. Um, understand their limits, and not the best at positive feedback. So making sure that they focus and to have a balanced approach to feedback, positive and constructive equally, okay? So for those of you eyes out there, um, we tend to be very, I'll say we, because I want, enthusiastic, right? Um, share, you know, our ideas. Sometimes we need to, you know, have a little restraint sometimes. If there's something hits the fan, sometimes we can't contain it or our eyes bulge out or we, we communicate it in a way sometimes because we're so engaged in um, feeling things, right? Not a negative thing. It's a superpower. It's just you have to contain it sometimes. Not great at organizing or detail. So is, if it's not something you do well as an I, how do you minimize distractions? How do you hunker down and get something done so you know there's no mistakes? Because our superpower is not detailed, but we can do it, okay? Is there someone in your world that can help be more organized? Are there tools or tricks from your colleagues that you can use to be organized? Um, and following through on things. Sometimes we're so caught up in the next shiny thing over there. Ooh, I get to talk to a client, excellent, but I don't have all the paperwork done. Sometimes we need to follow through or have someone holding like, you know, an assistant, if you're lucky enough to have one, someone that supports your client team or whatever it might be that can help you with that detail element. Um, be logical in your approach. Make sure you communicate it and uh, finish what you start. The S's. So if you are an S, I find a lot, it's quite a few S's in technical world. And so I see them with, I would see them probably in the insurance industry as much as I see with certain professions like uh, engineers and technical people in those worlds, uh, because insurance has a technical element too. Um, sometimes saying no is a problem, right? They don't want to have conflict. So learning to say no and understanding that that is something that you need to do. Because what happens with us is that they don't say no, they take it all on. And then everyone's wondering why they left the organization. And one of their superpowers, one of their great people on their team just left or somebody's off on sick leave, right? We need to take care of ourselves as S's um, and sometimes just say no. And it doesn't have to be no, it can be like, okay, I can take it on, however, I'm gonna need some help with something else to come off my plate or to assist with something else I'm working on. 
Um, sometimes we make decisions as S's and we worry too much about other people's feelings. So really understanding, especially if you're a leader, when you have to actually put your foot down and what that looks like. Uh, and again, getting support in that area from somebody around you if possible. And it could be HR if you're lucky enough to have HR. Can they support you in those difficult conversations? Um, risks are, and change and how things can, can not be routine uh, can be very stressful. So how do you stretch a little bit at a time? My suggestion with S is when I'm working with them is what's something that's comfortable for you right now? So yes, that's daunting what you have to do over the next six months, that big change that has to happen. What's something you can do right now for you and your team or for yourself? Okay, delegate because they don't like to, they don't like to, they don't want to have conflict. They want to be good to people. So often not great delegators, um, accept changes, obviously, um, and uh, verbalized feelings and thoughts, but sometimes we just don't say anything. Again, under stress, an S will be flight, right? Fleeing, they will, won't be in the fight mode, they will be in flight mode. And your C, Cs, just like Ds, sometimes don't show appreciation. Um, they're often very, personally, they gain um, sense of appreciation internally. They kind of know, I know I'm doing a good job. Sometimes it has to be vocalized to others that are doing a good job for them. It's not natural for them. Uh, they like to walk through everything to the nth degree. Making choices and decisions early without having all the information uh, can be very stressful. Time savers, because they're so used to doing something a certain way, can be challenging. So how do they become more efficient sometimes is an issue. They're effective if they take all the time they need, but efficiency is not always top of mind. Change is part of our world. So if you're a C, how do you embrace it as best you can? How do you tell your team? How do you tell whomever or even for your clients if something's happening, right? Let you know as early as they can in advance what's happening and what, how it impacts you or how it impacts the policy or how it impacts your client. Uh, timely decision making is usually one of the biggest things I see going awry. Uh, compromising because they know what's best because let's face it, they're technical people, they like to know all the ins and outs and they've done the pros and cons, but sometimes you kind of have to give, even though you think it has to be a certain way, you might have to compromise. And policies are not there to be, well, some policies, as you know, from a policy perspective in your world, it's just what it is. Um, but a policy in general and how you work, perhaps at work, sometimes you see it as the law and sometimes it needs to be talked through. Does this make sense? Is this the right policy or is there more gray area? Because they like to have the black and white perspective. So I know there's a lot of information, so that'll hopefully help you a little bit. So I want you to think about now um, the last, uh, where are we now? Time, I'm telling you, time flies by. I want you to start thinking about somebody. This is like the Coles Notes version of DISC. And you can, by all means, find lots of information online. There's lots of different websites uh, on DISC um, that you can look up and refresh your memory um, on what this all means. But if you get even one or two things from each style, it's amazing how much you can make a difference in the world you're in. So again, you can take a picture of this if you want to do it later. You can um, certainly, you know, I want you to tag, I'm going to give you a minute or so, and then I'm going to um, say two minutes to think about at least who you're going to talk about, who you're going to think about. I want you to think about one person, client, it could be a team member if you're a leader, it could be a colleague that you, and again, yourself, you don't have to write it down if you're in a group, but you can think about it, that you want to improve that relationship. It could be a new relationship you need to establish. Okay, so understanding your own style, we walked through last time, so you should have a sense of what you are, um, what, what it is about that person that you think makes them a certain style. So let's say it was Brittany, if she's a CS as an example, um, you know, what do you think is the, their style? What's stress in the relationship? What's causing stress? For example, I can bet a lot of the people that cause stress for you are people that are opposite to you. Again, as I said before, often we partner with people, those, those people personally. So my husband's very slow nature uh, slows me down, but can actually become a friction point because it's, he's a C and I'm an I. So what is it about that? And not to judge it because we're the ones getting stressed. We're the ones getting triggered, but we also have control over that. So what we do to adapt. Okay, so I'll just give you one minute and then I'll just clue things up.
All right. I'll do one couple of quick little tie ups that I think might be kind of helpful. So hopefully that piece around how you're going to adapt it doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be right, but something you could try that could make a difference and try it out. Um, now, I just want one little, couple of little quick little things to consider with this. And this hopefully this won't be more too overwhelming. But we do have natural styles. And the one assessment I do use shows these both. But I just gave you an example of a team. So if you are, everyone has a natural style, they're happy place. Right, so in the perfect job that it, that fits you like a glove is your natural style. If you were doing that at work, but most of us have to adapt at work. So at home, we might be a little different in the types of things and how we behave at home might be a little bit different. So this is just an example of a team whose natural style falls in these areas. So as you can see, just for time, I'd love to get your thoughts. But for time, you can see that a lot of people are down at the bottom, right? So their eyes and S's in those areas. So as a team, you can certainly start thinking about how your team plays out because it can say a lot. Okay, so what you would notice here is that a lot of people are naturally people oriented. Okay, so this is how this team actually adapts. So there's a movement, as you can see, I'll just go back and forth a little bit. So there's the adapted style. Some move a lot, some don't. This one moves a little bit. Some people move to the left. So you'll see still a lot on the bottom. So what do we know? At work, which is your adapted style, at work, these people are very IS in the sense of they're people oriented. So what does that mean? Okay, so one thing we know, then you gotta think about what does that mean? Well, we're missing, there's not a lot of D happening and there's moderate C happening. So that's task. Are we getting things done? Are we getting caught too much? Are we, are we caught too much in the people? Are we actually worried too much about people not actually giving feedback when we need to? These are the questions that I would ask. So how does it look? Are people giving constructive feedback? Are the elephants in the room coming out on the table? Are people too worried? Are people saying no? Is there delegation happening as an example as well? So there's just something to think about. If you do map yourself out as a team, where do you all fall? Because theoretically, you want someone in all the different buckets. Okay? In terms of feedback, um, I talked about this a little bit last uh, two slides here. So in terms of giving feedback, the best one to give feedback positive or constructive. So constructive feedback, the D's and the C's are better or constructive. The D's hands down are the best at giving feed constructive feedback. They just have the incredible ability, which we should all look up to, of ripping a Band-Aid. And as long as that's done professionally and respectfully, it can be extremely positive because we don't see that enough. That's a superpower of the D. Everyone else is pretty much more comfortable with giving positive feedback. C is a little bit more comfortable with constructive because they, they see things from a critical mind. Again, who takes it to heart? The S's and the I's can take things to heart, okay? Um, and sometimes you gotta think about this and how this plays out. Are you doing enough? and other people around you doing enough. But it also shows you what someone might be as well, okay? In terms of conflict, who seeks out conflict, right? Again, D is someone who's more critically minded. They're the only ones that will actually address conflict head on. And again, that's brilliant. So if you're missing Ds in your team, are the conversations being had? Who essentially avoids it? The Ds actually, the Ds, sorry, the Ss and the Cs will avoid. Right, the I's absolutely depending on the situation, but again, you know, the D's are your superpower in this one. So I just wanted to highlight that because often the D's are really looked at in a negative light because they can be they can be seen a little bit too assertive on occasion. But again, you need that within every team. Okay, so I know I'm probably a few minutes over time, and I apologize. And I know it's a Coles Notes version of this, but hopefully it starts to get you to think. Hopefully it gets you not to judge others. It's a matter of, huh. My client might be this, my colleague may be this. It kind of bugs me a little bit, but that's okay. That's about me, so how do I adapt to that? And this can give you a few tips to use for each of those, okay? And this, again, DISC is used around the world. There's lots of different versions of it, but the principles are all the same. So feel free to look it up, see if you can interject it into your teams, whether it's your own team, your clients, whatever might be, to help think a little differently and help us all to be a little less judgmental and create more trust in those relationships. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Let me know. I know it was super short and sweet um, in, the, in this approach, but let me know if you think it might be worthwhile within your organization. Thanks very much, and we'll talk to you again soon.